That's my good boy. Yep, he's still there. Look, I think he'll be accompanying us probably for most of the meeting, hopefully. So tonight's topic is the second letter of the acronym New Start. You can see that New Start is something based on the eight laws of health, which are taken from scripture and Ellen White's The Ministry of Healing. N is for nutrition. Um, we talked a lot about that last night. So if you missed it, you can check it out at the Fort Meyer Seventh day Amateurs Church's YouTube page. And the second letter in New Start is E for exercise. So tonight is all about exercise because next to weight loss, exercising more is most people's goal in 2024. And I couldn't stop laughing ever since I saw this cartoon on the right-hand side because I can relate. There's two women at the gym on the treadmill and one of them says, what's your favorite exercise? And the other woman replies, chewing. And I have to agree with her. That certainly is my favorite exercise as well. And it probably doesn't need to be number one. So tonight we're gonna look at other types of exercise besides chewing. And if you're like me and you like to chew a lot, you can also exercise more because that will actually increase how much energy you use so that you can ultimately chew more. So tonight we'll talk a little bit more about exercise and how we can relate it to our lives. I'm briefly gonna go over some exercise statistics then we're going to look at exercise in the Bible, then we're going to look at not just the physical benefits, but the mental and the emotional benefits of exercise. And then lastly, we're going to look at some easy tips and application, how to take away something new and apply it to our lives. So on the right hand side of the screen, there are some statistics, only about one in five, 20% of adults in the US exercise at each day. And about 23% of Adults do the recommended amount of aerobic and muscle strengthening activity. So that means that there's more than 75% that don't. Over $32 billion are spent at the gym, health, and fitness clubs. So we are spending the most we've ever spent on dieting, on fitness, on gym, yet we're the unhealthiest we've ever been in the history of this world. Now, there was the dark ages where people were dying a lot younger, where Average life expectancy was 40 years old, but people generally were dying back then because of disease. They weren't dying because of um, being obese. They weren't design, dying because of heart disease, because of diabetes, because of disease that related to their diets. They're actually dying to malnutrition, malnutrition. Sorry, guys, sometimes my brain gets all messed up, but they were actually dying because of malnourishment and on because of disease that was brought through infectious pathogens, kind of like bubonic plague and things like that. So technically they were healthier than us, but they weren't getting all the nutrients that they needed to fight off those diseases. Most diseases that we have today are actually caused by ourselves, the things that we're doing or the things that we're not doing. So tonight we're going to look at exercise, how much exercise should we be doing, and what are some practical ways we can get that exercise in. Because according to this chart here, young people used to love to exercise, but only about 33, 34% of them are getting the recommended amount of exercise. And you can see that the chart steadily declines the older an individual gets. But after the age of 30, we lose about half a percentage to a full percentage of muscle mass per year. So technically, the older we get, the more we should be exercising or the more we should be strength training. And if we look on the left side of the screen, not getting enough exercise greatly impacts your health. Um, it can actually cause premature death. People that don't exercise on a regular basis are at a 52% higher risk of dying early. People that don't exercise enough have a 39% greater chance of developing diabetes. And unfortunately, those that don't exercise enough are at a 26% higher risk of getting heart disease. So all of these we can actually control. And part of that is through our diet, but also through exercise. So let's take out our Bibles. And we are actually going to look at some common activities in the Bible and what we can learn from them. So the first one is, what was the beloved activity of God and Adam and Eve prior to sin? There's something that they would do every evening. So if someone could read Genesis 3 verse 8, that would let us know what did they love to do prior to the fall. And they heard the voice of the Lord walking in the garden. 
in the cool of the day. And Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God amongst the trees of the garden. They played hide and seek. <laughs> well, that was after the fall, maybe that was. <laughs> That's a good point. I never thought of that. But prior to the fall, they loved to walk with God. Ellen White tells us in Patriarchs and Prophets, angels used to walk with them and commune with them throughout the day. And God himself would descend from heaven and walk with them in the cool of the day. But Brenda brought up a good point. That walking changed to hide and seek after the flood. <laughs> and thankfully, though, God didn't give up on walking with them. So Cleopas, who is a Bible character that's not as famous, but he should be because he was one of the first people that got to walk with Jesus after Jesus was resurrected. He actually also learned some important things when he was walking. So if somebody could read Luke 24, 13 and 14, and then we're going to talk about the importance of learning while you walk. Because Biden is making America very vulnerable and putting up those. So on that issue of national security, we're going to hear from our first questioner. So Luke 24, verses 13 and 14. And this will just remind us of what they were doing when Jesus was teaching him. I can read it. Oh, thank you. And behold, two of them went that same day to a village called Emmaus, which from Jerusalem, about three score furlongs. And they talked together of all these things which had happened. And it came to, is that right? Stop here. That was exactly <laughs> it. Thank you. So they went three score furloughs, which is about seven miles. So they walked seven miles. And then if we follow the rest of the story, Jesus appeared, but they didn't know it was Jesus. And he walked the rest of the seven miles with them. And then he started showing them how he had fulfilled prophecy. And it wasn't until they broke bread that their eyes were opened and they realized it was Jesus. But walking is so important. That's why we're going to start with walking. Because throughout scripture, Jesus walked a lot whenever he taught the disciples. Whenever he lectured, he would generally be walking. And for those of us who remember college, it may have been a pleasant experience. It may have been a boring experience. Whatever your experience is, you may remember that professors walk a lot. And for some of them, it's to engage the class, to maintain energy and focus, and to prevent stiffness. For others, it helps them emphasize key points, and it helps them keep the attention of their students. Many professors found that physical movement helps them think and speak more clearly. They actually did a German study. You can see the links on the screen here. And kids would learn the vocabulary 20% faster after exercise. So exercise, as we're going to learn, really has an importance in how, what it does to your brain. And it actually makes it a lot easier to learn. And when we look at Jesus and the way that he would teach Adam and Eve in the garden, the way that he taught his disciples, the way that he taught Cleopas, many times he was outside of nature and he was walking. And now we're going to take a quick look at Moses and what some of his characteristics were. So Moses was doing something right before he died. So if somebody could read Deuteronomy 31 verse 1 and see if you could pick up on this. This is pretty incredible. This was Moses's last big action before he died. Deuteronomy 31 1. Oh. I can read. And Moses went and spake these words unto all of Israel. Thank you. And do you mind, I put the wrong verse on the screen. Do you mind reading um, chapter 34, verse 1? Uh, <laughs> Thank you. Sorry about that. Uh, well, well, he was using his mouth. Yeah. <laughs> Good point. <laughs> okay. And Moses went up from the plains of Moab unto the mountain of Nebo to the top of Pisgah, that is over against Jericho. And the Lord showed him all the land of Gilead and unto Dan. So what was Moses doing right before he died? <laughs> he didn't hear you. Oh, he was out walking. Yeah, he was walking. walking. Yeah. Hiking, he was climbing Mount Nebo. And a lot of people think it's in modern day Jordan. Sometimes we can't identify the exact mountain because it was many years ago, but they think this is Mount Nebo and it's a little under 3,000 feet 
high. So Moses was actually climbing a mountain right before he died. And we're going to look at how old was he when he did this and what was his health like? So if someone could read Deuteronomy 34 verse 7, notice how old he was and what his mind and what his senses were like. And Moses was 120 years old when he died. His eye was not dim, nor his natural force abated. Ah, so how old was he? 120 years old. Very good. And what does it mention about his energy, about his eyesight? Was not dimmed. Yeah. Pretty incredible. Like, I actually got this from a YouTube sermon by Dr. Eric Walsh, which I'll be referencing a few times. So if you're just listening and you'd like to look at the link, you can see it on the bottom. Just type in Dr. Eric Walsh exercise. The sermon will pop up. Or if you're in the group, I'll email it out to you. But Dr. Eric Walsh had some great points. He said, Moses was always walking. He was always in motion. He was never standing still. He didn't even stay at the grave quickly. Michael and the devil were fighting over him. And Michael took him right up to heaven. Moses was able to be like this because of his simple diet. He had been eating manna and water for 40 years. He was out getting fresh air. He was getting adequate sunlight. He was exercising. He was always in motion. And God actually intends for us to be always active, always in motion. Now, of course, there is a time for rest. We're not to be overactive or, you know, over abuse what he's been given us. But as we can see from the statistics, most people are not in action. And that's actually where all the problems are. Many of the problems are in America is because we're not in action. We're not getting enough exercise. So tonight, for the rest of the time, we will be ending a few minutes early to now overlap with another meeting after this. But we're going to talk about exercise, its benefits, and how to make it practical. So not only is heart disease, diabetes, heart attack, high cholesterol, all those are majorly related to diet and exercise. Anxiety is actually at an all-time high here in America. Suicide rates are at an all-time high, as well as depression and other mental health illnesses. And Ellen White actually says that some of this is traced back to inactivity. She says, inactivity is the greatest curse. Light employment and useful labor, while it does not tax mind and body, has a happy influence upon both. It strengthens the muscles, improves the circulation, and gives the satisfaction of knowing that he is not wholly useless in this busy world. He may be able to do but little at first, but he will soon find his strength increasing and the amount of work done can be increased accordingly. So no matter what your level is right now, any type of activity is good. And as time goes on, you can increase it. According to Harvard Medical School, exercise helps with anxiety. It takes your mind away from what you're worrying about because you're in the moment. You can't worry about the future. It decreases your muscle, muscle tension. It gets your heart rate up. It helps the serotonin, neurochemicals, dopamine. It activates the frontal region of your brain, and it helps you build up resources that can bolster resilience against stormy emotions. Dr. Eric Walsh just opened up my eyes to the fact that you can actually plan for stress ahead of time by exercising. If you know you have an extra stressful job or an individual comes into your life that's going to cause a lot of stress, besides praying for that person, exercise ahead of time. It's going to actually help you build up resources that will bolster resilience against these stormy emotions. And scripture reminds us to spiritually exercise as well. Hebrews 12, 1 says, Therefore, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us also lay aside every weight and the sin which clings so closely. Let us run with endurance the race that is set before us. So exercise can improve your mood. It can relieve your stress. It can boost your brain health and it can be improving your sleep. So question for you, what are the benefits that you've personally received through exercise? It could be physical, it could be mental, it could be emotional, it could be spiritual. What are some of the blessings that you benefit that you experience through exercise? better rest mm -hmm. oh, I was just going to say that uh, 
just before I retired, I don't know, 17, 18 years ago, uh, I went to the doctors and he said, your uh, cholesterol level is up about 225 and you uh, have elevated um, blood pressure. And I think we need to put you on those two medications. And I said to him, you know, what do I need to do, doctor, not to do that? And he said, lose some weight and to exercise. Mm -hmm. And uh, within six months, I had my cholesterol down to, I think then it was about 170. It's even lower now. And um, my blood pressure was back to normal. So those are the benefits that I find that uh, the exercise did for your health physically. And then, as it says, uh, emotionally uh, relieves the strain, uh, stress and that in your life. That's incredible to think that you're in better health than you were 17, 20 years ago. That, that's really, you're like aging backwards. That's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> I have found that, some, well, recent, not recently, Last year, I took a fall, and after that fall, I, I had a hard time walking, and then I started using hot and cold, and then after that, I started um, going to the gym a little bit, and the more and more that we were going to the gym, the better my um, my physical pain decreased, so I, I felt like um, it really helped me with that situation. I had an incredible, stressful time in my life about a year and a half ago. Um, it was just um, a group of individuals in my life causing a lot of stress, and I couldn't seem to get away from it. And that was sometimes when I actually had to start doing two-a-day workouts. I never thought that was possible. I had done it in my early 20s. That's when I was young, and you have that type of energy. And I didn't think I could do it. But that really, besides like having a clean diet and trust in God, um, that was really what helped me get through that time of stress. Then the individuals moved away, and then no longer was there any stress related to that. But ever since then, I've tried to keep like a really heavy workout regimen. I don't always do two workouts a day, obviously. I can't necessarily handle that. But I try to have like a variety of exercises throughout the day, especially if I have more time on my hands. Um, the good thing about exercise is it doesn't have to be done all at one time. Um, Dr. Eric Walsh was saying, if you can't squeeze in 30 minutes for a walk, doing ten three 10 minute walks is going to benefit you just as well. So instead of doing like an hour of something, maybe do 20 minutes here, 15 minutes here, 10 minutes here. If you have a dog, walk him twice a day. Um, if you have time for a few sit-ups in the morning, or if you like to look at a YouTube video or bike or something, um, does anybody have like anything that you recommend? Like what are some things that you could recommend to get in some easy exercise? Play golf. Play golf. Okay. Walk it. Walk the course. Ah, that's a great tip. Walk while you're playing golf. Walk the course. Mm -hmm. It's about five miles that it, the course is. Park um, in the further spot from the um, from the store. Jeff, um, don't do that. I hate it when you do that. <laughs> No, it's okay. My father always did it when we grew when I was growing up. I'm like, why are you doing this? But Jeff, you bring up a good point. It's good for us. Well, <laughs> um, and then you make me do this, and I don't like it so much because <laughs> you're much stronger at climbing than me, but always take the stairs. Mm -hmm. Never use the elevator. So Ashley and I have a rule if we go on a cruise ship. Our rule is that um, our room has to be closest to the gym. Um, we are not allowed to use the stairs. The elevator. And we go, I'm sorry, the elevator. Yeah, we can only use the stairs. And our room has to be closest to the gym. And it has to be furthest away from the buffet. And we go to the gym every day. That's our rules. <laughs> 
but we also question. check we also check the dessert bar every day as well. <laughs> and the good news is if you have big appetites like us, just increase your exercise because the more active you are, the more calories you're going to burn and ultimately the more energy you'll need. So if you've grown up having big appetites like myself, just increase the exercise so that you can put it to good use. So not Drink only, water. oh no, what were you saying, Brenda? Drink more water so you wouldn't have to eat so much. Good point. Yes, sometimes we're hungry because we're actually dehydrated and our mind is playing tricks on us. So that's a great point to just hydrate throughout the day. Next week is gonna be all about water and the importance of water, but that's an excellent point you brought up. There's a lot of physical activity benefits for children, but honestly, these are just as good for adults. It helps with academic performance. So if you're trying to memorize Bible verses, if you're trying to master prophecy, if you're trying to retain something you're studying, get some exercise. Um, like I said before, when you turn 30, you lose about half a percent to a full percent of body, um, excuse me, of muscle mass per year. So some people lose it faster than others. So exercising, most exercises are actually going to build up your muscle mass. Um, it helps with your cardiometabolic health helps with your bone strength, your brain health, your heart and your lung health, your long-term health, and it helps regulate a healthy weight so that you don't fluctuate between two extremes. Um, in particular, as Seventh-day Adventist Christians, we are interested in what it does to your brain, particularly the frontal lobe, because that's where God's seal is going to be. And your frontal lobe determines your character, your personality. So ultimately, what you do to your brain can impact whether or not you accept Jesus's gift of salvation. So exercise is actually going to make it easier to make wise, sound decisions. And one of the ways, many of the ways that it actually benefits your brain is it improves your memory. It lengthens your attention span. If you find sermons boring, if you find Bible study boring, try getting some exercise, turning off social media, turning off the TV, because that's actually shortening your attention span. Technically, a goldfish has a longer attention span than we do. We have about eight seconds. A goldfish has about nine seconds. And they did a lot of studies saying that if you're outside in nature, that can actually increase your attention span because it's not moving very fast. You're having to take everything in at a realistic speed. There's a lot of studies in the, I shouldn't say olden days, but a few decades ago that said like once you damage your brain through drugs or through alcohol, you cannot rebuild those brain cells. But now a lot of new studies are actually coming out and saying, yes, you can actually regenerate them through good diet, through exercise, through sleep. So exercise actually promotes the growth of new nerves and blood vessels, and it can help you with multitasking and planning. And there's another one here. It's called Why Your Brain Loves the Gym. Um, it's going to talk about like the different hormones that are released. I will send this out to you later if you want to um, learn about it more. But besides actually physically sculpting your body, which society focuses so much on, and yeah, that's important. Like you want to see results when you work out. But the real importance is what it does to your brain and how it helps you spiritually. So you can check out this chart if you would like. You can also check out this chart. It's going to talk about how it helps with your memory and what exactly it does to your brain. But this sermon that I keep referencing by Dr. Eric Walsh is literally the best sermon on exercise I've ever, ever listened to. It's really the only one because a lot of pastors don't preach on exercise. And he goes into the science of it because that's his background. But I just took some notes on the sermon and he says, exercise helps you learn better. It strengthens your concentration. It improves your sleep. It assists in emotional healing. So if something stressful, if something traumatic happened, it can actually help you heal from that. It stimulates growth of the brain. It grows capillaries. It protects against stress, even future stress. You can plan for it by exercising ahead of time. It helps you focus on the present instead of the future so it can reduce anxiety. It helps you prepare in advance for the challenges ahead. It strengthens your immune system. It reduces inflammation. It detoxifies your body through sweating. This is really important. Most toxins are released through your urine, but they did studies and certain toxins will only be released through sweat. So if you're not sweating, if you're not exercising, you're actually retaining these toxins that can only be eliminated through sweating. It also increases your metabolism. So if you want to eat some more, exercise some more. 
and then it reverses aging. So it's not going to make you look 20 years younger, but it's going to put your body in a better frame of health and of mind so that many people actually find that they're healthier now than they were 10, 20 years ago. So if you want to listen to the sermon, I linked it again here because I hope you get to check it out. So now we're going to look at ways that you guys like to exercise so that the rest of us can get ideas. Before we share, I just wanted to rattle off a few exercises that best help to fight anxiety. Because like I said, a year and a half ago, I really had to do a lot of practical research just for myself. Running, um, I'm not a runner. My husband's an excellent runner. I am not. But they say, if you don't like to run, you can alternate between walking and sprinting. I X'd that one off my list because I do not like to run. But I do like to hike. Um, hiking, you're out in nature, you're getting vitamin D, you're getting water, you're getting time with God, time with your spouse. It's going to have a lot of mental health benefits. They even have some studies that come out of Japan that are called forest bathing. Supposedly, some people are treating their cancer and helping reduce it by the amount of time they spend out in nature. It's called forest bathing if you want to check that out. Biking. Biking can get your heart rate up really quick and it can help you burn off that nervous energy that sometimes contributes to anxiety. You can go to a spin class at the gym. You can be on a stationary bike at the gym or at your house. Or if you're like me, just get a bike and go outside. Um, you could be practical about this. Sometimes I just leisurely bike. Yesterday I returned library books. It's like a mile there, a mile back. I wasn't going at a fast pace, but it was leisure. It was exercise. It was nice to be outside. Resistance and body weight. Um, anything like a plank, a push-up, a lunge, or a squat, it's helping you use your own weight to build muscle and weight lifting. <clears throat> um, you can start with small weights. You can work up to larger weights. I personally think a mix of both are good. Um, you could purchase them to have them at home. They're not that expensive. And honestly, your health is worth it, especially since studies show we're losing half a percentage to a full percentage of muscle mass per year. Muscle is kind of what holds your body together, kind of what sculpts it. So the more muscle you have, um, the more you're probably going to feel better about yourself. You're probably going to have more strength. You're probably going to sleep better. And it's great for reducing anxiety. A lot of gyms are only $10 a month. So you don't have to join a fancy CrossFit gym that charges $200 a month. Um, you can actually just join Planet Fitness or Crunch or something like that for $10 a month. A lot of people have gyms at work that they can join for free. Um, you can actually look for people at the gym. You can pay a trainer. Sometimes they have specials for $10 and you can pay them one time to kind of show you what to do. Or you could just look for a really nice person and you can kind of tell if they're going to help you. And you could just ask them a few questions to show you the machine and they'll be happy to do that. Um, after my brain surgery, I lost 20 pounds really quickly and I was happy to be that skinny, but honestly, I was like emaciated and I had no muscle mass. So after that, I really had to look into rebuilding uh, muscle and I probably spent hours on YouTube, like doing different exercises, kind of training myself because I don't like to go to the gym and have someone scream in my ear about what I'm supposed to be doing. So for me, getting a trainer wasn't really my preference, but YouTube literally has millions of videos. You can check out what you would like to do. And if you don't like it, go to another video and you can do it in the privacy of your home. And then when you feel comfortable, if you want to go to the gym, you can do it at the gym. So this is what I came across, what's helped me the best, but we all have different personalities and different likes and dislikes. So I'd like to open it up. What do you like to do to exercise? What helps keep you young? What helps keep you active? I like to walk. I don't walk as far as I should. <laughs> and maybe I'll start walking a little bit further, but I do try and walk almost every day. So that's at least something. I also play tennis, so that's that's something too. And I'm that at least three times a week. Well, that's great. And you're you're a great tennis player too. If anybody wants a challenge, play against Sue and Phil. Jeff and I lost to them. They're very, very good. <laughs> oh, thank you. <laughs> and how long have you been playing tennis? Is it something you picked up in Florida or did you play in Massachusetts as well? We, we played in Massachusetts. A little, too. A little Not as much because we were working full time. Oh, but... okay. Oh. 
I spent, I spent, Hi, Elaine. Can can you hear us? We heard you talking, and then for some reason it went out. Yeah. Um. I I spent fifteen years out uh, kayaking. Oh. Uh. Before I moved here, of course, and of course I like to bike a lot, and um, I like to hike a lot. Uh. Now I'm just in the process of rebuilding strength and um starting to walk again. Wonderful. And Brenda, I know you like to golf and you came up with a good idea to walk when you golf. And Brenda, I consider you a heavy lifter because whenever I see you at the church, you're lifting a lot of things. So you're very practical with your exercise. Yes, there is a lot of food to pick up and sort out and a lot is required there. I like certain, um, I tend to use YouTube for a lot of strength training exercises. Um, I have like a really, a YouTube channel that I tend to frequent and they have a lot of good exercises. Like they can, they all target certain parts of the body or they'll do like a full body. So I like to do that because I feel like it gets my heart rate up as well. Like it's not only training my muscles, but it also gets my heart rate up. So I like to use YouTube for some of those, um, exercises because I feel like I'm kind of getting it's not like a full cardio workout but I, I feel like I'm still getting like my heart rate increasing while I'm also getting like the muscle um, endurance and everything at that the same time as you hear, brings up a good point about utilizing YouTube because the great thing about that is if you click on a video and you don't like it find another one there's literally millions of them out there you can also do them in the privacy of your home. And if you don't have weights with you, you can start out with like, you know, cans of vegetables or, you know, water bottles or laundry detergent. Um, you could also get a lot of weights just at places like Walmart. Um, a lot of actually thrift stores have really good sets of dumbbells and they might not all be a matching set, but you can get a wide range of anywhere from like, I've seen like three pounds all the way up to 25 pounds. I haven't seen anything past 25, but you could certainly pick that up at a store. So you could have a few at your house and you could do your YouTube exercises. Greg, were you going to say something? Yeah, I like, I like to ride my bicycle for good exercise and go to the um to community center here and lift weights in the, in the um, exercise room. That's, oh, that's the great. Really lifting the room. Is there certain things you it's like to do basketball. in the exercise room? Um. How much did I like, do um the machines mm -hmm. like the, the chest press and mm -hmm. and um you know, uh pull up my um my calf my uh, my calves my leg <laughs> the machine and I like to play basketball over there in the gym that <clears throat> to you. Greg, you have an amazing exercise routine. You've got your cardio with the basketball, with the biking, and you're doing the weights with the chest press, your quads. That That's great. You've got it all covered. Awesome. The important thing is to find an exercise that you like to do because Dr. Eric Walsh also mentioned if it's an exercise you're dreading, there's something about the power of your mind. You're not going to reap the full benefits of it. So if it's something you actually like to do, you're actually going to get an emotional benefit, but you're also going to get a physical benefit as well. So there's so many exercises out there. If there's certain ones you don't like, just skip those, move on. There's literally millions of others. Like I'll give an example. Like I do not like lunges. I've never liked lunges. So if a video has a lunge in it, I just do something else at that time. And then I go back to whatever exercise they're doing. Um, there's other things that I certainly won't do any type of dancing. I'm not going to do it. I'm religiously opposed to it. So any type of those salsa dances or hip hop, not going to do it. Also yoga, not going to do it. But without those, I'm not really missing out because there's so many other exercises. You know, there's Pilates, there's weightlifting, there's kickboxing, there's biking, there's golfing, swimming, kayaking, running, um, traditional resistance, um, all kinds of classes at the gym. 
Um, if there's a certain area on your body you want to target, just type it into YouTube. If you want to target your arms, say like exercises for the arms. If you want to target your legs, you know, exercises for the legs. If you're older, you can type in like, you know, I don't know, exercises for older women. I've typed that in before because after my brain surgery, I literally had the stamina of someone, you know, in their late eighties, like my stamina was really low. So I actually had to start with exercises that were targeted for elderly people. So use the internet to your advantage. There's lots and lots of ideas and options out there. Um, I am gonna send this to you afterwards. Um, this next screen here is just a video here. It's about like three resistance training exercises that are really easy to do that you can do in your own home. You don't even have to have a set of weights for them. But for the sake of time, because we're ending a little bit early, I'm not going to show it now, but these are great exercises to integrate. And it shows that like, no matter what age you are, you can always integrate a little weightlifting, a little strength training. So Ellen White, though, reminds us that of all the exercises out there, there is one that is the best. So if somebody could read this famous quote by her, then we're going to go into the next slide. We're going to read a few more facts about it, and then we're going to discuss it. So anyone is welcome to read it if you wish. There is no exercise that can take the place of walking. By it, the circulation of the blood is greatly improved. Walking in all cases where it is possible is the best remedy for the diseased bodies because in this, all of the organs of the body are brought into use, Ellen White. Thank you. So walking is probably the easiest exercise that pretty much anyone can do. Um, according to another study by Harvard Medical School, it counteracts the effects of weight-promoting genes. Some people are more likely to put on weight because of genetics. Um, maybe their mother binge ate. Maybe she stuffed herself with fatty, sugary foods while she was pregnant with the child. So now the child has a propensity to reach for those foods. Or maybe they tend to put on weight quicker than other people. Ca walking can actually counteract this. It can help tame a sweet tooth. So if you have a craving for chocolate or for ice cream or for brownie that just doesn't seem to go away, try taking a walk around the neighborhood. Many times it will actually dissipate that desire. It actually reduces the risk of developing breast cancer. It eases joint pain. So a lot of mistakes people make is when they exercise and they're sore, they stop exercising. And that's actually really bad because your body's gonna stay in the state of inflammation. Just like Moses, you wanna keep on moving. Now, certain exercises you might need to take a break from. Like if you're deadlifting quite a bit of weight, you might need to take a rest day, but you can still walk, you can still bike, you can still play with the dog. We should always be in motion and walking is a great thing to do even on Sabbath because it's gonna help with your joint pain. It also boosts your immune function. So especially during those winter months when people are getting COVID or cold, flu, things like that, get outside more, drink some water, get some vitamin D and walk because people found that those or studies found that people that walk at least 20 minutes a day have 43% fewer sick days. And that's only through walking 20 minutes a day. Dr. Eric Walsh reminds us, if you don't have 20 minutes, you can separate it. Do 10 minutes in the morning, 10 minutes at night. And you are actually gonna notice a major difference in how often you get sick if you even get sick at all. So now that we have some of the mental, the physical, and the spiritual benefits of exercise, we're gonna learn about how can we make it practical? How can we start doing it tonight and keep on doing it? Because a lot of studies have shown instead of having one or two intense workouts per week, it's better to be consistent. It's better to have something manageable that you can do five, six, seven days a week than something hardcore, but you can only do it one or two days a week and then you are burned out and tired for the rest of the week. That's actually not gonna have as much benefit as something you can do regularly. So the first question here are, what are some practical forms of exercise that would have been common in the days of Jesus? So think back to the Bible, think back to life in ancient Israel. What were some practical forms of exercise? They didn't have cars, so they walked. <laughs> Good point. <laughs> Agriculture, gardening. Mm -hmm. Lifting up rocks to make altars. 
Yeah. <laughs> Walking up the mountain. Mm -hmm. And even if you look at pictures, like I love looking at old pictures just from like the 40s, the 50s and 60s. Everyone just had this beautiful, classy, modest, elegant look. And one of the things I noticed right away is by how thin everyone was. And part of that is due to the processed foods. They weren't eating as much um, processed foods as we are now. But another reason, particularly for women, is they were doing a lot of household work and they were doing a lot of work outside the home. So they were walking to the grocery store several days a week. They were carrying their groceries home. They were walking to the bus stop. They were walking home. They were doing the laundry by hand. They were outside gardening. They were playing with the children. So it's not like women in the 50s and 60s were actually going to the gym, lifting all this weight, doing all this kickboxing. They were just being practical, and they were blessing their families while being active. And if we look at scripture, scripture doesn't want us to be neurotic about exercise. So exercise certainly is not wrong as long as it's done to honor and glorify God and to present your body as a living tabernacle, as a living temple. But it's better if your exercise can be actually used to bless other people. So like what you guys mentioned, farming, agriculture, lifting things, walking, these are practical. These are something that we can do every, every single day. And number two, strenuous exercise is beneficial. I'm not saying you shouldn't. Um, I, I find a lot of benefits with strenuous exercise, but it's important that we integrate daily exercise. So why do you think it's so important that we're consistent, that we practice daily exercise? So we don't lose our muscle mass. Yep. Builds a good habit. Right. Yeah, that's it. I never thought of that, but that's so important. Yeah. I thought there was a, a few of those crackers left in a bag that must be down too. And it also keeps your body in motion, just like Moses. He was a man in motion. He was mountain climbing, almost a 3,000 tall, 3,000 foot tall mountain at 120 years old. So daily exercise, whatever it is, gardening, walking the dog, biking, a few sit-ups, a few planks, whatever you happen to do, it is important that you do it consistently on a daily basis. And some people don't exercise at all on Sabbath. Um, I certainly respect that decision, but there's nothing wrong, in my opinion, of just like, going on a walk after you eat to get that digestion going. A lot of studies have been done that just going for a simple 10 minute walk after you eat can actually reduce your diabetes. And some people who are pre-diabetic stopped being pre-diabetic simply after going on a 10 minute walk after they eat. So what are some easy manageable forms of exercise we can do on a daily basis? Make sure that we do what we enjoy doing. I know at my job, um, we have a pretty big, I'm in the, well, the building that I work in is pretty big. And so a lot of people will bring sneakers and on their break time, um, you'll see them just like walking around the building for to get a couple extra steps. So that's pretty popular at my job. And then just even walking further away, like since our building is so big, we have multiple bathrooms for staff. So just walking to a further bathroom, you know, you'll be surprised with how many steps you can actually get by just being more intentional to park further away or just, you know, take the stairs instead of the elevator, just walking to a further bathroom. So stuff like that, I try to do, um, you know, just to be intentional with just getting in a little bit more activity, so to speak. Great tip, Shakira. Mm -hmm. um, how about um, trying a new sport? I recently picked up racquetball and I've never played that before. And just trying to learn the game and playing with others gets my body moving and moving in different ways than um, I traditionally do. So, and it's stimulating for your mind too, because you're having to use your mind 
uh, and exercise at the same time. So it's, I think it's beneficial. And it sounds like you guys already have like a regimented exercise routine. You're already consistent with exercising, which is great. Um, but sometimes there's people that listen that might be overwhelmed. Like maybe they haven't exercised in years and every time they exercise, they're so sore, they just never want to do it again. So what tips would you have for beginners? Like people that really haven't exercised in a while, but know they need to exercise. Um, what are some words of encouragement? What are some tips you could share with them? Stretch. I think just starting slow too. Um, you know, being mindful that it took a while to maybe become in the condition that they're in physically, and it's going to take a while to undo that and be, build more stamina and resilience. So, you know, starting slow, maybe a 10 minute walk today, and then 15, 20, and just pacing yourself and um, building up your stamina that way. Because I mean, I remember when I was using like three pound weights, and that was heavy. And then I went to the five pound weights, and then I went to the eight pound weights. And then now I can actually use 10 pounds for my routine, but it took time for me to kind of build up and, you know, get my muscle mass, I guess, a little bit stronger. So I would just encourage people to be consistent and to just um, slowly build themselves back up. Something is always better than nothing. Mm -hmm. If you planned on doing something big and you didn't, as long as you did something, is always better than nothing. Mm -hmm. I think too, if you do miss a day, you know, so what? Do it the next day. Don't say, oh, you know, lose it another day. And then you've got three days you haven't done it. And you just get right back on the horse and, mm -hmm. and uh, do your exercise. And the good news is if it's something you like doing, you'll actually crave doing it. Like I haven't exercised today, so I'm actually craving it. So I'm going to do something after this. Whereas like in the past, I'd be like, if I have exercise, I don't care. I'd rather just go eat. But like now I can actually feel my body craving it because it's something that I like to do. But like what Shakira said, it takes time. Like what Sue and what Jeff said, do something. But if you skip a day, don't be too hard on yourself. You know, just, you know, move on. Like none of us are perfect. You know, we've all made mistakes. We've all been less active than we should have been, but we can pick ourselves up. I like Micah 6, 8. It says, when I fall, I will arise. When I sit in darkness, the Lord will be a light unto me. So if you've already broken your New Year's goals, whatever they are, don't worry. Like when you fall, you will arise. The Lord will lift you up. And then there's some people, like probably many of you guys out here, who you're already exercising, you're pretty active. But you want to take it to the next level. You really want to increase what you can do in 2024. So what tips do you guys have for the rest of us? For those of you, I know pretty much all of you have been exercising regularly. Um, what can we do to be a bit more advanced in 2024? Like Proverbs says, iron sharpens iron. Find a workout partner who is a little bit more fit than you and ask them to work out with you and stick to that routine and have them bring you to the next level. I encourage you to just challenge yourself. Um, I don't like challenges personally. I'm pretty much of a more lazy temperament. I don't seize the day like I should. But like, as you build up your momentum, you can actually try things you didn't think you could do. Like what Shakira was saying, just like try going a little bit more. I think of weightlifting, they call it progressive overload. Like you should always be progressing and then you want to do it to the point of fatigue. So if you're doing like, you know, if you're running and it's kind of easy to you, try running faster or running longer. Or if you're walking, it's kind of easy to you. Uh, maybe try jogging a little bit, or maybe you can put some weights around your ankles, or maybe try going uphill a little bit, just a little something to challenge yourself. And the way God designed your body, it will actually adapt to that and you'll actually embrace more challenges. And as we close here, because we're just going to close a few minutes early so they can start their meeting, but 
The good news is you don't have to wait years or even months to reap the results. If you start exercising, which I encourage you, do something after this, even if it's only five minutes. Within 10 minutes, it's going to increase blood flow to your brain. It's going to increase alertness, and it's going to release endorphins. You can literally get an endorphin rush this evening if you just do a little exercise. You're going to get that within 10 minutes. After, um, oops, let me just move this on here. Sorry, I lost what I was trying to show you on here. After three days, it's going to increase your metabolic rate for up to 72 hours after exercise. So if you want to burn more calories, if fat loss is something that you're worried about, that you're trying to do, exercise a bit more. After four weeks, one month, it's going to improve your physical, your mental, your social, and your financial health. Because people that are oftentimes more disciplined in exercise are more disciplined in finance. After one or two weeks, it's going to improve your self-confidence. It's going to reduce your depression. It's going to, you're going to be able to actually measure improvements. If you start working out your arms, I promise you in one week, you will feel a difference. If you work out your quads or if you increase your endurance in running, you will notice a difference after only a week. And lastly, after one year, it will increase your bone density, your self-esteem, and your brain function. There'll be even more improvements in your mental health. A lot of people have gotten rid of mental disorders through exercise. So a lot of people that have like body dysmorphia, binge eating, anorexia, bulimia, um, they can actually, they actually took up weightlifting. And it's amazing how a lot of those symptoms dissipated because you can't worry about other things if you're in that moment. A lot of runners, for some reason, um, who used to be alcoholics have taken up running because they get a lot of that same endorphin rush. So it's interesting that no matter what addiction you may have struggled with, there's actually an exercise that you can do where you'll actually experience some of those endorphins, but you won't have all that negative guilt attached with it. So whatever your goal is this year, we encourage you to start it tonight. Give it 10 minutes, and I promise you, you will get an endorphin rush. You're going to feel better and you're gonna sleep better. I'm sorry to cut it off so quickly, but I'm just gonna end in prayer and then I'm gonna log off because there is a Fort Myers prayer meeting in about five minutes. Oh, one last thing. Um, sign up for a race, challenge yourself, put it on the calendar and I'll give you a goal. And one last thing, one other podcast I listen to is Run for God. It's like-minded Christians that are into walking and running. Okay, that's it. Awesome, that was great. Can I call on you to close in prayer? Sure. Thank you. Dear Heavenly Father, we just come to you in prayer now as we conclude this lesson. We thank you for the bodies that you've given us, for the abilities that we do have, Lord. And we just ask you to be with us this year so that we may just challenge ourselves physically so that we may be stronger and more um, mentally focused and clear so that we can do your work and your will to reach others, Lord. Let it be an opportunity for us to witness and fellowship with other Christians. Um, but most importantly, let us just draw near to you and to be strengthened and renewed. And we ask this in Jesus name. Amen. 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 Thank you so much. All right. Go exercise now. I promise you it's worth it. Have a great evening, everyone. <laughs> Good night. Good night. Good night.